something. I was sitting in my garage uh, uh, last last night, and um, I was sitting there with my beautiful wife. And no, actually, it was the night before, Thursday night, and uh, right Thursday night. And I was just sitting there with my beautiful wife, and we were sitting there. I was sitting in the garage, just kind of chilling while I was eating a, a chicken sandwich, and she was eating a hamburger and. And I, I don't even remember what I was doing out there. But all of a sudden, say all of a sudden, <laughs> that voice, you know that voice, God's voice. <laughs> God's voice spoke to me. And I, and, and I looked at my wife and I said, does so-and-so know that story about the about the four chapters and, and about walking down the road and falling in the hole. I, I might have said that story here, right? And falling in the hole and stuff. She says, man, I don't know. I said, well, I, 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 God's telling me to call. So I picked up the phone and I called so-and-so. And I said, have you ever heard this story about, uh, you know, about the four chapter and the man going down the road? She said, yeah, I heard it from Joe and you. And I was thinking to myself, yeah, I tell it better than Joe. But uh, as a matter of fact, I did hear that from Joe, okay? So, but she said, I, I, I didn't really understand it, so I began to explain it to her. And as I began to explain it, they started crying. It kind of got emotional. <laughs> I'm like, oh, this is going to be good right here. This is going to be good right here. And what had happened was, and I said, but I'm telling you, the Lord told me to call you because he has a word for you. And the word for you was chapter four, which said you're walking down a different road. And she, I said, well, why are you crying? She says, well, well, let me tell you something. I said, OK. She said that I was sitting here doing my thing. And it's about a minute ago. I told the Lord that I need you. I need you to keep me here. I need, I, 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 need, I need you. I'm lonely, and I need you. And let me tell you, when God is good, he'll speak a word right on time. Amen. But I'm going to tell you that it was a voice that spoke what God wanted. And I'm going to tell you that, that God needs a voice from some of us tonight to speak a word. A word of salvation, a word of blessing, a word of comfort. See, God is looking for a voice. He's looking for somebody who says, you know what, God, this, this thing right here that you put on my face, I want to speak it out. I, I, God, I, I, I'm going to spend enough time with you that when I hear your voice, because the word of God says that my sheep know my voice, so you got to know God. Amen. You got to know who he is to hear his voice. And when you know who he is, oh, 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 oh. I, I, I hear you. I hear you, God. I, I, I'm going to pick up that phone, God. Oh, you want me to go visit somebody? I, I'm going to go visit that somebody. See, God wants a voice. So I ask, are you that voice? Are you that voice? The title of my message is The Voice. And I'm not talking about the sitcom or the, the, the reality show or, you know, you, you know, on that reality show where they sing or something. I could be on that show. Okay, I could be on that show, all right? But anyway, so in Matthew 3, it reads this. And in those days, John the Baptist came preaching the desert of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. This is he who was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight paths for him. John's clothes were made of camel's hair, and he was leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. And I want to focus on verse 3, and it said this, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, making ready the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Are you that voice? See, the world needs a voice to speak to someone in prison. Amen. The world needs a voice that will speak to a drug addict. Amen. 
Because there's a lot of us that if we ran into a drug addict, we would probably just go right by. But are you that voice? See, when you're a voice, you can't pick and choose when to speak. It's when God tells you to speak, you're the voice. It doesn't matter if they're in prison. It doesn't matter if they're a drug addict. It don't matter if they're a prostitute. If God says speak, he means speak. See, the world needs somebody, a voice. The world needs a voice to go to somebody to speak at those in the hospital. The world needs a voice to speak of, to somebody that is a Norfolk, somebody that has lost their mother, their father. The world needs a voice to speak to the one that is thinking about committing suicide. Are you that voice? Are you that voice? Are you the one? The world needs a voice to speak salvation. The world needs a voice to speak blessings. The world needs a voice to speak comfort. God needs a voice. Are you that voice? God, I, I would even say this. God, raise me up to be a voice. Raise me. God, I don't know how to be a voice. I, I, I don't know how. I, I, I don't know uh, what I should say. I don't know what to do, God, but I'm going to tell you something. Will you please look past my faults and raise me up to be a voice? See, many years ago, there was this young boy that knew he knew he was going to be a preacher. He knew he was going to be a preacher. But he didn't know how to talk. He was shy. But you know what? In through his trials and tribulations and through the, the mercy and grace of God, he raised up a voice, and that voice is mine because of his grace, because of his mercy, because of his love, because he needed somebody, somebody. He needed a voice to go speak salvation. He needed a voice to go speak blessings over somebody. He needed a voice to go sp to speak somebody comfort, amen? But to be this voice, you have to have purpose. You got to know your purpose. See, John knew who he was. He knew that he was the forerunner for Christ. He didn't doubt it. He didn't say, well, maybe I am the Christ. Maybe I am. I mean, who Jesus? He's my cousin. You know, we born six months apart. Huh? I'm the Christ. No. He didn't claim I believe me. There's some people that claim they're the Christ and they're not the Christ. Amen? But John knew he was who he was. He said in verse 11, As for me, I baptize you with water for repentance, but he who is coming after me is greater than I, and I am not fit to remove his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. I'm going to tell you what. He didn't claim to be somebody else. He already knew who he was, and when, he, when you know who you are, you can be a voice. But you got to know who you are. Let me tell you, I, he didn't want to be Joel Osteen. He didn't want to be John Hagee. He didn't want to be T.D. Jakes. He didn't want to be I.B. Hiller. And he didn't want to be Billy Graham. He wanted to be John the Baptist because that's what God had anointed him for this time for that purpose. Amen. Let me tell you that, that you and your purpose, you don't have to be like T.D. Jakes. You ain't got to preach like him. You ain't got to have a church like him. But I could tell you when you got a voice, God can do something in your life to save the world. Because let me tell you, T.D. Jakes has a voice, and he's in his purpose, and he knows who he is. Now, let me tell you, don't go get your voice and go be in T.D. Jakes' church because you're going to get beat up. <laughs> Literally, you probably will. <laughs> let me tell you, don't be like a Pat Robinson or a Bill Johnson or a Benny Hinn. Go be your own voice. Be the voice that God has called you to be. Let me, let me tell you, he knows who you are. He knows your abilities. He knows where he wants to take you. Because he did it for them, and he's going to do it for you. You just have to say, here I am. Raise me up, God. I'm ready to be a voice. You have to know who you are. See, when you know who you are, the enemy, he runs from you. Let me tell you, when, when, let me tell you it doesn't matter how big you are, but if you don't know who you are, 
you could be intimidated by somebody this small. Amen? Yeah, I mean, people go around, people go around, I'm going to tell you, that's my dad right there. He's probably about five foot three. You know, I don't know how much you weigh. I'm about six foot five. I'm about 300 pounds or so, or what, give or take. Okay? <laughs> give or, yeah, plus or minus some. But I'm going to tell you, my dad, he ain't intimidated by me. <laughs> he know who he is. He knows that I may be big, but he bigger. Because he knows who he is. Plus, I respect him, right? I respect him. See, when you know who you are, it doesn't matter where God calls you. You just know I'm going. I'm going because, God, you told me I got a voice. And because you told me, God, and I got a voice, I'm going to just start saying something. Amen. I'm going to just start just, even if it comes out, see, when Moses went to go tell people about to, uh, to, uh, to release the uh, Israelites from Egypt, he was stuttering. So God got Aaron with him. Guess what? It don't matter if you stutter. You can hardly speak. If you even know sign language, God can still use you because you got a voice. But you got to know who you are. And if you know who you are, you have to be willing to give up that voice so that God can have his way. Amen. See, he, he understood it wasn't him to be first. Oh, there's a lot of us that want to be first. I mean, really, who wants to be last? Anybody? Any takers? No, no, we all want to be first. But see, you have to be able to be a voice. You have to be able to deny your own cause. See, you have to understand what a cause is. It's a principle. It's a movement. Because of a deep commitment, one is willing to defend it. Why do you, got, why do you think we have, uh, uh, growing, up, I, I, growing up, my dad, he, he worked for a union. And when they went on strike, guess what? They went on strike. You didn't cross the line. Right? They had a purpose. They had a movement. They had a, they, they, they had a purpose on what they were going to do. You didn't cross that line. Well, let me tell you, when, there's, uh, when, when somebody believes so much in something, they're willing to defend it. Whether it's right or whether it's wrong, they're going to defend it. I know like any of y'all here that have children, you're going to defend your kid. I mean, I'm going to defend my kids. Now, they do make me a little upset sometimes, but I'm still going to defend them. Whether they're right or whether they're wrong, publicly, I'm going to defend them. I'm just telling you. So if you want to uh, discipline my child in front of me, I advise you to do it in the back. Because I'm going to do it, I'm going to defend them in the front. Amen. But I'm going to get after them at the end. So it's about a purpose. It's about, you know what, I believe you so much, I'm going to defend you. Amen. See, you, you, they, you see this is all, you see it all the time. Every day. Look on the news. Look how many times when they started passing all these laws about different things, about this and that. Guess what? People are out there, they're having a movement. Man, people meet. Don't those people got a job? I mean, come on. Don't they got a job? I mean, <laughs> I know what you're saying. <laughs> we just laughed. Thank you, God. I mean, that's what, that's what I'm talking about. Because they may even got a job, but they're willing to say, you know what? I deny. I, I, I got a cause, and I'm going to go defend that cause. I may got a job. Some of them may even lose their job. I don't know why they want to do something like that, but some of them may just lose their job because they believe in it so much that they're willing to defend it. So I ask you, what's your cause? Are you willing to lay down your cause to go for the cause of Christ? Because that's the only cause that we have. The only cause is to love God with all our hearts and all our mind and all our soul and loving our neighbor. That's our cause. You may have, you have to lay down your cause. It doesn't matter if, if you're, if, well, I'm supposed to be over here. No, no, no. Did God tell you, is that the cause of Christ? Is it loving God and is it loving your neighbor? Other than that, you, there is no other cause. Galatians 2.20 says this. I have been crucified with Christ and it is no longer I who live, but it's Christ that lives it with me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith, which is the son of my God who loved me and gave himself for me. See, I, I lay down my life. 
I, I, I gave up my cause. I gave up my right for anything when I became a Christian. When I decided to follow Christ, I crucified that man. Amen. No greater love has a greater love has no one than this than to lay down one's life for his friends. And I called you friends. That was Jesus speaking in John 15. See, will you lay down your life for his sake? John 13, 30 say, let me tell you, it's easy to die. Uh, well, what are you talking about? It's easy to die. It's, it's just quit breathing, you're dead. But it says lay down. Lay down. That's every day. Every day you wake up. Every day you breathe that you have to lay down your cause, your own agenda, your own thing, the own thing that you're doing. Am I tripping up over here? The Y'all watching me. Are he going to trip? No. You have to lay that down. You have to lay it aside every day. That's why I lay down. It's a daily basis. Your words, your emotions, your feelings, and to speak God's word. That's the cause. What is your cause that you are willing to defend it? Or is it not a, really a cause? Because some of us is all for Christ. We're ready to do anything for Christ. But when it costs something. When it costs something, there's a lot of runners. When you have a cause for Christ, you can't run. You say, here I am. If I lose everything, if I lose my house, my car, my job, my family, God, I'm still going to do it because it's the cause. Those things, God, that you, I know you're going to return. Look at Job. He lost everything, but God returned it to him. Because yeah. Job had a cause. Where's your cause? Are you willing to lay down yourself, whether right or wrong, but you're willing to lay your cause down for the cause of Christ to go forward? Number two, to be a voice. You have to be a voice regardless if you're the only voice. The word said that there was a voice calling out in the wilderness. I don't know about you, but if in the wilderness, I'm not, I'm not running out to book me a hotel out there. I'm not running out there to book it. There wasn't a lot of people that was uh, wanted to go on vacation out in the wilderness, right? He was probably there all by himself. And I'm going to tell you, the only reason why they went out there, the, the Pharisees and Sadducees, you know why they really went out there? Because they just thought it was the right thing to do. Read the scriptures. They thought it was just the right thing to do. There's a whole lot of people that go to church just because it's the right thing to do. There's a lot of people that pray just because they think it's the right thing to do. There's a lot of people that want to give an offering or a tithe because they think it's the right thing to do. But to be a voice in the wilderness, you might have to hurt some people's feelings because I would rather them be saved and I'd rather them make heaven to me not say anything at all. Amen? Amen? The voice has to understand that there are not many going down that path. Matthew 7, 13, and 14 says, Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide, and the way is broad that leads to destruction, and there are many who enter through it. For the gate is small, and the way is the narrow that leads to life, and there are few who find it. See, there's not very many that want to use their voice because it's a narrow gate. I read one, I, I was reading some commentaries and some things. They said, one person said, well, it was just a one-way lane. It's only one way. Jesus, the one way. See, it wasn't two lanes coming this way or that way. It was no middle lane. It's one way. And I'm going to tell you, there's not a lot of people that want to give their voice for the cause of Christ. But to do so, to be the voice, you, whether anybody, I, I, I'm going to tell you, whether my wife goes with me, or whether my son goes with me, or whether my daughter goes with me, I still got to go. I still got to be a voice. Because at the end of the day, when I meet Jesus, 
He ain't going to ask me, well, did your wife go with you? Did your son go with you? Did your daughter go with you? Did your mama go with you? Did your daddy go with you? Did your grandmother, your grandfather? No, he going to say, well, sure was narrow, wasn't it? But you made it. You made it because of the cause of Christ. There isn't going to be a lot of people hanging out with you if you want to be a voice of God. I'm going to tell you that right now. I can tell you that they're, 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 they ain't going to call you and ask you to go to the movies. They're not going to ask you to come to a birthday party. They're not going to ask you just to show up because you have a voice of God. Because when you have a voice, you can't help but share the cause of Christ. You can't help but share about salvation. You can't help but share about the blessings. You can't help but share about comfort because of the cause of Christ. Because I'm going to tell you that narrow is the gate. Narrow is the way. I could tell you I have a, an uncle. And uh, I was talking to him. And and he told me this because God speaks to him and he, uh, God always tells him to give a word. And he said this to me. I asked God if I can quit. I don't want to do it no more because it's lonely. I, I asked God if I can quit because it's lonely. There's nobody beside me. When, when I got to go, I got to go. When God tells her, well, give me a word, whether, uh, whether, some, whether my wife agrees with it or not, I still have to give the word. And he asked God, he said, God, I got to quit. I, I can't take being alone. But God said, oh, you can't quit now. You can't quit now. See, when your voice, you can't say, I just want to quit. When your voice is not about, it's not about, hey, you know, I don't feel good today. I ain't going to be the voice. No, it's every day. It's the cause of Christ. It's, it's, it's saying, I died today, God, so that you can live through me. I died today, God, so that you can break the chains off of somebody. I wonder how many times did John the Baptist question himself if he was right about the cause. We know one time, because he sent one of his disciples to go see Jesus and said, are you the one? Are you the one? It's okay. It's okay to sometimes question it. But I'm going to tell you that God's cause will cause you to change your mind back saying, you know what? I got to go. I know this thing's real. I got to go. There ain't nothing that's going to stop me. There ain't nothing going to slow me down. There ain't nothing going to hold me back. Because I got to go. To be a voice. You have to be able to go low so the king of kings can go up. See, who's ever heard about a corporate ladder? See, a corporate ladder is like trying to get a climb as fast as you can no matter what. Kicking, screaming, tearing down, knocking people over so that you can get to the top. But I'm going to tell you that when you get to that ladder, you can only go so far. Even in my own life. I, 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 I'm not saying I kicked anybody off the ladder. <laughs> Maybe I did. <laughs> Maybe I spoke bad about them. I don't know. But I only could go so far when I got there. And I was, I mean, I, every day I said, God, I got the best job. But inside I was like, I hate this job. You know, I was talking to a friend the other day, and I was telling him, man, I got the best job. He said, you said that about your last job. I said, yeah, but this was just as good. But I ain't going to knock nobody corporate ladder off. It don't matter who you are. doesn't matter. You can be the president of the United States. You can be a senator. You can be a famous golfer. You can be a famous football player. You can be a famous basketball player. You can be a famous baseball play player. But you can only go so far. Have you ever heard that the new, uh, uh, what is it, the, the new 60s, uh, the, the, the 60s or the new 50s or something like that? Or the new 50s, the new 40s, or the new 30s is the new 20s? But I'm going to tell you that God started it. Oh, it's recorded in the Word. It's recorded. I mean, Jesus was the first one to say, you know what, if you go low, I'll take you high. 
Mm, that's opposite. Oh, we don't know that. If you go low, I'm going to take you high. Does anybody remember that game, the limbo? We used to play that. And when I was a children's pastor, we used to play that all the time. Love that game, by the way. I never got past the first one stick down because it was already too low for me. But I can tell you, there's some kids that love that game. I mean, I don't know when you were a kid because that was a long time ago for me. No, nah, that was only, uh-huh, 30-something. That's the new 20, by the way. <laughs> the limbo game. I mean, it says, low as you go, man, there's these kids. I mean, they like, they they would bend backwards and they'd be like their head or their, their leg be up over their head. And they'd be they'd like this. And then they come out the other side and they go, here I am. You know, that the, the, it's about how low can you go. Matthew 23, 10 and 12 says this. Do not be called leaders. For one is your leader. That is Christ. But the greatest among you shall be your servant. Whoever exalts himself shall be humble. And whoever humbles himself shall be exalted. See, I told you it was recorded. The new high is the low amen who are you promoting yourself or god with your voice see everybody wants to be in the hall of fame amen everybody they they everybody wants to wants to uh, uh the world to know their name I, I, I mean you don't want the world to know your name i mean everybody wants the world to know their name people can break records they want to be heroes they want to go that extra mile. But whose hall of fame do you want to be standing in? To go low, it costs you something. But in due season, say due season, God will lift you up. See, the Bible talks about a cloud of witness in Hebrews 11. A hall of fame, if you will. To be a voice that promotes God. Christ instead of climbing the ladder of the world they may never know your name you may never break a record <laughs> you may never you may never get to notoriety as anybody else but you'll be standing in the hall of fame because of the cause of Christ let me tell you who you'll be joining you won't be joining Enola Ryan but you'll be joining an Abel. You'll be joining an Enoch. You'll be joining a Noah. You'll be joining Abraham. You'll be joining a Sarah. You'll be joining a Ruth. You'll be joining a Moses. You'll be joining an Isaac. Hebrews 11.39 said, And all this, having gained a proof through their faith. See, it was through their faith. They didn't receive nothing on this side. But it was through their voice. It was through their voice that they received a hall of fame. Amen. And in closing, I want to ask the question, where have the voices gone? Give me a second. Where have the voices gone? Where are the voices of the prophets? Where are the voices of the evangelists? Where are the voices of the apostles? Where are the voices of the teachers? And where are the voices of the pastors? We do a lot with our voices. We sing. We eat with them, we complain with them, we hate with them, we curse with them. In Isaiah 49 and 10, it says, lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up and don't be afraid. Here's your God. See, the sovereign Lord comes with power. God needs a voice to proclaim salvation. God needs a voice to proclaim blessings. And God needs a voice to proclaim comfort. Will you allow God 
to raise up a voice in you. Will you be that voice? And I'm going to tell you, it's not about where you came from. It's about where you're going. And where you go, will you be that voice? Amen? Amen. Somebody give God a hand clap. Can we just bow our heads today? I just want you to just search your heart. Just search your heart. If many years ago you made that dedication of saying, God, I'll, I'll be the voice. But like most voices, some of them get hoarse. Or some of them, some people's voice, they just lose them. But there's a voice inside of you. And I ask you just to search your heart and make a dedication between just you and God. Saying, God, I haven't been a very good voice. But today, will you raise that voice back up in me so that I can proclaim salvation, so that I can proclaim blessings, and so that I can proclaim comfort to those you send me. <laughs> Heavenly Father.